NFL Live is presented by Golden Corral. We're excited. I hope you guys are excited. And as Dev said, let's let them hear it all the way down to Atlanta. We're still here. We're still here. We're still here. Well, Belichick and Brady still here. Golf and McVay, they've only just arrived. Welcome to Super Bowl Week NFL Live. Jack Collinsworth, Field Yates, former Patriot, two-time Super Bowl champ, Damian Woody, our coach. John Fox, everyone. Yeah, you guys going down to Atlanta? What's the thing? down there? Looking forward to it. going down there, Woody. I'm going today. Are you going down? I'm going today, Coach. Thinking about it? I'm not going to be there. I'll <laughs> go when we're in it. I like, I'm in it. I like <laughs> click it on the tube. Then there's only six days, believe it or not, the Super Bowl 53. So we have our finest boots on the ground down there in the ATL. Sal Palantonio is there all week with the Patriots. Josina Anderson will spend her week with the younger crew in McVay and those Rams. So let's get straight to Atlanta right now. Welcome in Sal Palantonio. Sal, Super Bowl number nine. Nothing new about this. What's going on with the Patriots as they start a busy week? And Jack, this is the ninth Super Bowl for the Patriots under the Belichick Brady era that I have covered. And there's a different feel to this Patriots team. And you know, Tom Brady talked about it today in his normal WEEI Boston radio hit this morning. He said, about that AFC championship game it was one of the great joys of my life that's how a lot it used to feel before all the success it brings back different feelings and emotions you can just tell that this team is confident and relaxed it comes from the confidence and the relaxation of the head coach and the quarterback ninth Super Bowl for these guys been there kind of done that but it's also sort of back to the future for these guys it's the energy that they used to feel the joy before all of the success and that's a good thing for this football team at this time especially today they came in yesterday last year when they went to Minneapolis and played the Eagles they came in on Monday today was a very light day players had a chance to go to Georgia Tech University and work out do some conditioning and weightlifting. They had meetings, no practice today, and they will have opening night tonight and then all day off tomorrow and then practice on Wednesday. So a light day, a different feel to this football team, a relaxed and confident Tom Brady. It's trickling down to the entire team here at the Team Hotel in Atlanta. Sal, thank you very much, sir. Enjoy the game, enjoy the week. So it is Overreaction Monday on NFL Live. Very simple concept. I will read a statement. The fellas will tell me if it is an overreaction or not an overreaction. Number one is Brady is more motivated than ever. Overreaction or not. What do you think? I'll start, Jack, and I'll just say this. It's not an overreaction, and it's not to say that Tom Brady prioritizes this Super Bowl more than he has during times in which Damian was a teammate or other appearances he's made. This is, of course, number nine for Tom Brady, but Tom Brady has long lived by the mantra that the most important game for him was the next one. So, of course, it's not an overreaction that the next Super Bowl, the one that is now six days away, has him more motivated than he has ever been, been in his career. And I know everybody wants to make this about, could this be the final chapter in his Super Bowl legacy? He's not worried about that right now. What he's worried about is trying to find a way to get to his next Super Bowl win, which is why I believe it is not an overreaction to say he is more motivated than ever. Oh, it's definitely not an over. It's not an overreaction. Listen, you know how players always say, players or coaches always say, we don't pay attention to the media. That's a bunch of bull, okay? <laughs> it's a bunch of bull because I don't know for how long this season where everyone has kind of been saying, oh, the Patriots are vulnerable. Is this the end of the Patriots dynasty? Tom Brady's not looking like the same Tom Brady. Those guys hear all those things. Tom Brady has heard all those things spoken in, in the media. So he's coming into this game fired up, ready to go, not an overreaction. What do you think, Coach? Uh, definitely not an overreaction. You know, and I, I agree with both Field and Damian. You know, Tom Brady, and again, conditioned a lot like with Bill Belichick is, this is about the next play. This is about the next day. This is about the next game. And, you know, they listened to all that, I promise you. Mm -hmm. And that chip, and, you know, I even answered on this set. 
Coach, what do you think's wrong with Tom Brady? And I just looked and laughed. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with Tom Brady. His supporting cast may have stumbled along the way, but every year, any Super Bowl team, they go through tough spots, and it's been no different. But, but Tom Brady's going to be ready for this one. Old hat is what they call it where I come from. They're used to this, man. Are you get yeah. right back to it. So their opponent, the Rams, they crossed the time zones. They arrived in Atlanta last night. And the only reporter we have with potential to be better dressed than Wade Phillips is our Josina Anderson. So we have her with the team. We'll welcome in Josina now who will spend her entire week with that L.A. crew. Josina, Todd Gurley has been less than a star so far in this postseason. How do the Rams feel about a potential turnaround on Super Bowl Sunday? Well, Jack, there's certainly still a lot of intrigue and mystery surrounding Rams running back Todd Gurley, and that is going to be the case, seeing as though the NFL's rushing leader since he entered the league four years ago, but is coming off of a four-carry, ten-rush-yard performance. So I talked to Rams running backs coach Skip Pete, and the first thing he said to me is, Joe, I talked to him on the field right before you interviewed him, and I told Todd, listen, relax. There will be another opportunity to play, but if you feel in your heart you could have done better, then keep that in your spirit. So then I said, Skip, what is the deal? Is he still hurting? Is is he not hurting? He said, listen, Josina, typically in a game, we have about 60 to 70 plays. The goal is to get Gurley about half of that. Now, he said in the beginning of the season, those 30-plus snaps were mostly him carrying the ball as a primary back, but he says that looks very different now. He acknowledges that week one, Gurley hurt that knee, and uh, through week eight, he was averaging about 21 rushes. Since then, it's just been about 13. He acknowledges that there was an aggravation week 16, but he says it was mostly rest week 17. So Pete emphasized, look, I think that Gurley is mostly fine, but what it is is that we are monitoring those snaps and how he's utilized to keep him fresh, and that may involve him coming in more on protections like he did last week. But he said if you look at the stat sheet, Todd Gurley still had his 32 snaps, C.J. Anderson 30. We're trying to balance that with incorporating him in. And lastly, he said, coming into this week, we've been sharing notes in the running backs room, trends that we all know from playing against the Patriots so we can create different mismatches, different angles. But he acknowledged that all of that can look very different come Super Bowl Sunday. And Jack, before I toss it to you, I just want to say hello, Damian Woody, and welcome back to the NFL studio. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy here to have yeah. back, too. Welcome back, superstar. I'm getting, We're I'm glad getting, to have I'm you. I'm getting the okay. Thank you very much, Josina. I like it. It's good to have Damian yes, back. Yeah, give him, you know what. Give it, give it to him. And you know that I will. You know, thank you very much. Great stuff there. So we kind of all know how this Rams roster came together. It's a rookie quarterback. They go all chips in the middle of the table saying, we're going to go figure this thing out in free agency. So the overreaction Monday statement is, the Rams have to win before they pay golf. Start us off, Phil. What do you think? It's not an overreaction. And let me start by saying this, Jack. They can be good for a very long time. But there's been this contrast this week. We're talking about the young versus the old. The old hats, as you just described, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. But let's look closer. Who is the team that really went all in this season to try and win now? The team that spent $221 million, 50-plus million more than the Patriots are spending in cash this season. The Rams are the team that have positioned themselves to win right now before they have to pay this long list of players that is eventually going to come due beyond Brandon Cooks and Todd Gurley and guys they have already paid. The Patriots have this model of sustainability they have now followed for 19 years. I'm not saying the Rams are not built up to succeed for quite some time, but there I believe is an inherent acknowledgement by even the own LA Rams that this is our best chance this year to go out there and win, win right away. And as you said, Jared Goff is eligible to be extended after this season. Now they could wait two or three more years to do it. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden the roster has a different complexion when your quarterback is making $25 million or more a year as opposed to seven or $8 million in the third year of his rookie contract. No doubt. What do you think, Damon? I think it's an overreaction. I think, you know, to, to what Field said, I think, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the Rams have a, a stadium that's coming online in 2020, and you know, you know that's why they kind of went chips all in. But I don't think they had you necessarily have to win a Super Bowl if you're if you're the Los Angeles Rams in order to pay Jeff Goff. I just look at the 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 increment, the leaps and bounds that he's made from year one under Jeff Fisher to now with Sean McVay. He's going to continue to get better and better and better, and I think the Rams are going to reward him winning a Super Bowl or not. 
Yeah, I'm going to say it's an overreaction. You know, like I think to win this year's Super Bowl, I don't know that they have any more pressure. I always was of the feeling of, you know, there's two types of pressure, those you feel and those you apply. And I hope Sean McVay and the, and the Rams are attacking this year's Super Bowl just like that mm -hmm. and not adding any more pressure. Right. You know, the stuff Field talks about, I agree, might be an overreaction mm -hmm. for years to come, right. but not in this next week's Super Bowl. Yeah, and of the 32 that entered this contest, only a pair remain. We only have two teams coming down the stretch. And for the New Orleans Saints, it's been two great teams and two even greater heartbreaks for them. First, the Minneapolis Miracle, then the blown call on Championship Sunday. And that has only been magnified now by Adam Schefter's report that there were four Southern California-based officials on that NFC Championship crew. So the question is, we'll start with you here, Coach. How bad of a look do you think that is for the league? Well, I think, you know, they're cognizant on who's from where and who officiates games. I go back to Jeff Triplett when I was with the Carolina Panthers. He never had any of our Carolina Panther games. So I know the league's aware of it. I think maybe the miscommunication is a little bit in these playoff games now. The officiating crews are all-star crews, which is unlike what they do in the regular season. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that, but I think this is how possibly that slipped through the cracks in that championship game is that it was an all-star crew and they... Some of them happen to be from Southern California. Any problem with the Southern California guys out there in that game with the Rams in play? I'm so sick and tired of this story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. I'm, 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 I mean, you. I'm just, I don't I know, maybe I'm just old school about this. Yeah. Like, you lost, okay? Yes. Every, can we really, can we just turn the page? More than one play. It's like we're just yeah. trying to throw flames on this conspiracy theory fire yeah. here. Yeah. You know, it was an unfortunate call. It's right. human error. It's part part of the game. And I know a lot of people down in New Orleans, you know, they're going to have, they're going to be thinking about this for a long time. But at the end of the day, you lost the game. It's tough for us to turn the page and move on to the Super Bowl. All right, so you guys have given the reaction. I think a lot of the people that are in New Orleans are feeling it's human nature, right? But I think what this illustrates to me on a larger scale is that when the NFL goes silent for now eight days following what is be believed to be the most egregious non-call in playoff history, it opens up Pandora's box to all kinds of elements being introduced into the who, what, where, when, and why this call went down. Right? If the NFL had come out and said something last week, it's not going to take away the sting from the Saints fans, the Saints players, the Saints organization. But at least it kind of closes the circle on this matter as much as it can possibly be closed other than the emotional side of it. But when the NFL remains silent, and you know Wednesday at 1 p.m. when Commissioner Goodell speaks is likely to be when the silence is broken, until that time... like. Anything could happen. Nothing would surprise me in terms of iterations of this story, and I just wish the NFL, I think many others feel this way, had said something sooner. You know yeah. what? I, I agree from this standpoint that I wish the commissioner had, or someone from the league office had said something maybe Monday after the game to put this to bed because you shouldn't have this carry over to the Super Bowl. This is your biggest event of the year, and here it is. You're going to have, probably have Roger Goodell talk about something that happened in the NFC Championship game. That's not a good look. Well, I think the league office wants to stay quiet because they don't want to come out and bash their officials publicly. Could the official but come out and say, well, I missed the be call? judicious there... about this. I mean, the NBA issues the two-minute report, which, yeah. you know, and they, they, they take culpability when they screw up a call. And I think what it does in yeah. the eyes of spectators and even players is, hey, we get it. There is human error involved in right. being a ref. If you admit it and show some contrition, that goes a long way in the court of public opinion. Totally. And the NFL, I think, has sort of missed the window to do that and show that contrition. That fans, their anger, if anything, has amplified, which seems crazy because after that game, can you imagine how disgruntled fans in New Orleans were? And it seems like that has only gotten more bitter and lingered longer than it probably should have if the NFL had just said, we're sorry. We got it wrong. We're going to wear this one. I agree. And speaking of breaking silence, we do have Drew Brees who posted this on his Instagram account. It was this morning, read in part. I've spent this last week navigating the heartache and disappointment from the game. Some things within our control, some outside of our control that caused us to fall short. So much of the motivation is to represent who that nation with determination and resiliency. We want to play for you, fight for you, and win for you. You deserve that. Everything that has happened to this community, we have bounded together, galvanized, and leaped forward every time. The frustration we feel can be channeled in the same way. Pour that passion and emotion into your families and communities. That is about as Drew Brees as it gets right there. <laughs> Coming up on NFL Live, we sit down with both Super Bowl quarterbacks. And welcome back to NFL Live, presented by Golden Corral.
All right, so our Sunday standouts this week are Pro Bowl standouts. We'll start you off as we get into this thing with best getting the message across, we call this. Take a look at Mr. Jordan here walking in, has the shirt that says, blow whistles, not games, as we were talking about at the top of the show. Woody loves this story. <laughs> Right back to it. <laughs> Shout out to GVArtwork.com for that shirt. I saw that yeah. online. Very Good cool. Stuff. Best teamwork makes the dream work. Take a look at Watson here rolling out, and this is where it gets a little confusing. That's Mike Evans picking him off, it looks like. Yeah, He's normally it's a one. good idea for a quarterback to throw it to Mike Evans. The problem is Mike Evans rarely plays cornerback, and in this case he <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah. Last time we saw a receiver play uh, – DB, I think it was Gronk, and I think that was the Miami Miracle. Correct. Speaking yeah. of the miracles. Correct, yes. So this play is still going on, it looks like. We haven't changed plays yet, have we? No, no. Nope. Still nope. moving. Harrison Smith uh, cuts him off Smith, the second time Viking. this play. This was the short in the game. <laughs> play so long, we have to cut it mid highlight. Best teamwork doesn't make the dream work. Right here, take a look. This is Howard. Boom to Adam. Adam puts a little shot on Adam's the same guy who took out the Patriot mascot, same. too. How do you feel about that, Damien? Former Patriot? See the clip? No comment. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know my comment? The Patriot. Blind side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Patriot mascot doesn't need to be at the Pro Bowl. He's at the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? That's, that is true. He's yeah, got no business true. being out here. This is for yeah. 30 other teams. Take a look at Watson again. Watson right over the middle. Look at that pressure. Alvin Kamara getting a field, bending the corner. Looking like a young Demarcus Lawrence or something. What do you think? Is there any offensive guys you'd like to see rush the Patrick coach? Kamara, can he get after the QB? Yeah, well, I tell you what, on third down, I wouldn't mind putting him in there. I'm not putting him in there on third and one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Most honest mistake here. Take a look at Mahomes. Mahomes drops back. Mahomes gets this thing over to the sidelines. It looks like we got a little sweatshirt being worn right there by Keenan Allen. That thing is called incomplete. Lisa. Take a look at Mahomes. Oops. <laughs> 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 Like, my bad, best mama. Best <laughs> you know you're a young veteran when you're already covering your That's mouth and right. you still had your yeah. helmet on. They pitched this thing back, Trubisky. Is that Adams again getting a little shot in? Of course yeah. it's Jamal Adams. Yeah, Jamal there's Adams there's not any the blitzing in this game. <laughs> hey, you got a challenge for Yes, us. yes. What's the challenge? What's the I know, challenge? I know you coach oh. the Pro Bowl. You're well, not allowed flag to blitz. That was, a, that was a strong safety right there getting that hit. Yeah, he was on line. Is that illegal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. illegal? What could have been Sunday standouts? Take a look. It's like this is Dak. Dak drops back. Dak takes oh, the shot. That's oh, the oh, yeah. right there. Mm. Oh. Yeah, put it in my bread basket. I'll just uh, drop it. Mm. Mm. Look like me, Damon. Yeah. <laughs> so that was me playing the Pro Bowl in the rain. It wasn't nothing to do. Here goes Watson again. Watson gets this thing out. And uh, yeah, oh. Oh, a little more of that. Mm. A little more of that. 17 oh, nothing. hands. Elements. In the rain. How do you motivate the guys in the rain to play in the Pro Bowl? Oh, I mean, uh, good luck. Uh, I did your thing. I might not be going back there. Yeah. $67,000 well, for the winner's yeah, yeah, motivator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winner's share. 67 large. Yeah, these guys have a whole lot of 67 larges. That's the only problem. Take a look at the best smile. You see Garrett, he kind of had this smile going throughout the game. You know, I think if somebody's happy all seasons here, you got to respect that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're right there with you. Overreaction Monday on Super Bowl week. We are talking Pro Bowl, though. This is our overreaction. It says the Pro Bowl should be a flag football game. Overreaction or not an overreaction? Start us off. Uh, I'm going to go overreaction because I don't know that she should go all the way to flag. We'll just keep it powder puff like it is. Yeah. yeah so it's not, I don't want it, I don't want it to go all the way to flag because you do worry about it. Remember now, these franchises have their star players there and you want to keep them healthy. I had Kyle Long come back two years ago with a broken hand at the Pro Bowl. That doesn't make a coach happy. Hmm. What do you think, Woody? I'm going to go not a no-reaction. Hey, listen, it, the fact that you got Alvin Kamara and Saquon Barkley like rushing, like, to, like for me, like, I get upset at something like that. Yeah. Like, I don't care if it's Pro Bowl or not. I'm not going to have a, you know, a doggone running Star. back. Right? Yeah, yeah, rushing the pass on me and, and, and making me look bad out there. So, <laughs> I would ra I'd rather see the, the physical skill set of these guys. I'm not, I'm not necessarily concerned about the, the physical act, you know, the physical hits or anything like that. I think it's an overreaction. Come on now, preserve the spirit <laughs> of the Pro Bowl. Yesterday, things got exacerbated a little bit because it was so wet and refs were so prone to just blowing the whistle the first time someone made contact with them. But keep it alive. Show love to the big guys like Damian Woody that mm. work so hard at their craft throughout the year. I think a defensive lineman wants to go up and just, you know, just get – probably embarrassed, but like having to tackle Alvin Kamara by grabbing a little flag right there, like it's already difficult enough to wrap him up. I think we've got to keep giving love to the big men, linebackers, I tight ends, the, too. I think the big fellas, would, they would embrace that challenge. Well, they might just in, do in it. It's like seven on seven. 
Yeah, you know, big guys always want to be like receivers and running backs. Yeah, and why like, didn't they line up like, like Taylor wanted? That, that's what I'm instead saying. Instead of Jalen Ramsey. That's what I would have yeah. done. Yeah. Coach, I know yeah. you would have done yes, that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> How much money would it take to get the big stars to play hard in the Pro Bowl? Million? <sighs> it's going to take a lot of money. It's going to be yeah. it it's maybe like uh, seven large. It's going to take a lot You're of money. You're going to be yeah, definitely seven figures. <laughs> so Tom Brady playing in his ninth Super Bowl, speaking of a lot of money. When NFL Live returns, he tells us why it's the struggle, not the success, that keeps this man coming back. I've set a goal for myself at 45, and like I said before, it's very hard to make it that far. You gotta fight and claw. 2001 was like that. This year has been like that. 